Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today we're going to be going over the top mid laners of 7.29. I've done position 5, I've done position 1, and so here we are at position 2. Let me know in the comment section down below what should I do next? Position 3? Is offlane, like, do, do people care the least about the offlane? Or do people care the least about position 4? Uh, I guess we'll have to see in the comments. Maybe I'll even do a poll. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> All right, let's get into the top mid laners. By the way, if you guys haven't signed up for the Game Leap website already, literally I made today, yes, today, four videos. Four videos, all different. One was a full Smurf gameplay video just for the website. Not going to come out here on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, if you feel like you're missing out on that content, you are! You are missing out on that content. You're never going to see it because you don't have a Game Leap sub yet. And literally, there's a sale going on, and it's about to end. On top of that, it gives you 50% off, and when you sign up, you also get the chance to enter into a giveaway where one of you is going to win the chance to have a free hour coaching session with me. And so, yeah, there's literally not a better time to sign up. I'm doing more content than ever for the website, and you're really going to enjoy it. All right, getting into the video, let's hop into it. So... I have some controversial takes here, but I'll explain them in depth and talk about why I think these heroes are definitely potent. Now, the first one is probably the most important one to talk about in this current meta, and that is Beastmaster. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been seeing what people have been doing with this new axe. Basically, Beastmaster Axe was buffed. They made the mana costs better on the wild axes, and when you buy Axe, they do more damage. So in the past, how Beastmaster Ags worked was it literally just gave you no cooldown. Now they do amp damage, cost less mana, and you have a level 25 talent that buffs it up. But really, that's not even what's most important. What's most important is that people are now playing Beastmaster as a mid laner. Ever since Necromonicon was taken out of the game, I think Valve basically tried to say, how can we make Beastmaster viable in other ways? And they way over buff the axes. At least that's how it feels. And now you might be saying, why are the axes that good? I mean, sure, it's no cooldown, but why are they good? It's because every time you hit someone with an axe, it amps the next set of axes. And you can imagine why that's good if it doesn't cost really any mana. And it's a zero second cooldown. On top of that, it is one of the best farming abilities in the game. Yes, when you max it out, you can use it to stack caps, you can use your boars to stack caps, and then you easily clear through multiple stacks. You could actually take two sets of stacks at the same time by throwing your axe at a specific angle. This hero has an incredible amount of potential with this axe and definitely should not be underestimated. And the last thing I'd like to say about it that makes it even better is the fact that this hero simply has good stats. Beastmaster has good base damage. On top of that, Wild Axes are just a great level 1 spell. And you have decent movement speed, decent armor. You are a, just a beast of a hero. Get it? <laughs> okay. And briefly, just get into the item build, only because I want to make sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, there are a few different builds that I've seen. I've seen um, some people go like Mana Boots into Axe. I've seen some Helma the Dominator and tags, which is okay, but if you do go Helm Dom, you kind of have to take the units uh, and, and the attack speed first and then go into the axes later on, which is fine. But what I think is probably the best Ags build is simply rushing it. Brown Boots into Ags, your skill build. Um, the, the most common one that I've seen is you take four points in axes, two points of your boar, and then you just leave the inner beast alone that's what I've seen the most. I have seen a little bit of, of Inner Beast and Axis Max as well, but it doesn't seem to be as good uh, because you cannot stack camps with your boar, which I think is super, super valuable. All right, next up, moving on, we have Medusa. I know this one's a little bit weird, but the hero's win rate is doing very well, and I think it's a fantastic pup hero. Uh, in particular, even though you're not even going to buy Manta every game, the Manta buffs and the Dragonlance buffs were a really big deal in my opinion for Medusa and they're really helping her win rate. A lot of people love buying Dragonlance and Manta on Medusa and now you get two more agility from Dragonlance which is okay and most importantly Manta cooldown is 15 seconds less and you combine these two things together and all of a sudden Medusa can actually split push with Mantas. In the past it was so dang inconvenient because literally you couldn't use it on every creep wave right because creep waves spawn uh, every 30 seconds and Manta cooldown for range heroes was 45, but now you can because it's a 30 second cooldown. And on top of that, in fights, let's say you used it to split push, 
a lot of the time in the past with the old cooldown, you'd fall into this trap of using it to farm, which, you know, you, you kind of want to do. They're really effective for farming, but then you wouldn't have it for a fight and you get stuck in a really weird position. And therefore, this was a massive buff to the hero. On top of that, it received a couple of different changes as well. Uh, the mana shield now gives you 100 mana at level 1 and scales, uh, which I don't even necessarily think is that OP, but it is good early on into the lane. And one more thing I'd like to say is that buying bottle in, on Medusa in the early levels is solid, and even if you don't go bottle in the mid lane on Medusa, you can still pick up the water runes, and you can imagine why they're particularly good on Medusa, right? Because they make you extremely tanky. And yeah, as I was saying, you can still buy bottle. It's, it's quite nice. Next up is the Thompson hero. So what's the Thompson hero? The Thompson hero is Ricky. Uh, yeah, so he actually picked this in a pro game recently, so this is not me just making it up. On top of that, I played against it in a ranked pub in a very high MMR average game, and uh, I lost. I had to play. It was really, really hard to play against. The hero is very sustainable in the laning stage. Great armor, great HP regen. And um, yeah, when it hits level 6, it can actually deny entire creep waves. It's pretty nuts how easy it is to deny with Ricky when you get your ultimate. But most importantly, what I'd like to say is that the hero is incredibly good at roaming, right? So when you get your treads and you get like a wand and a wraith band, you're really good at fighting in the early game, right? It, it, all you gotta do is walk to a side lane, walk behind a carry, hit him, hit him. Oh, they're out of attack range, blink strike, hit him, hit him. Out of attack range, blink strike, hit him, hit him. Out of attack range, tricks to the trade. Boom, it's going to be a kill onto every hero if they're not already dead. And another thing that I'd like to know is that Tricks of the Trade is incredibly good at dodging spells in the laning stage. So personally, I was playing Gyro against him, right? And he just Tricks of the Trade dodged my homing missile. And yeah, I, I can't do much about that. Another thing I'd like to know, which is probably the biggest Ricky buff of all, is the change to Diffusal Blade. Mana break damage per mana burned was increased from 80% to 100%. Definitely a big buff. On top of that, the agility was increased on Diffusal Blade, which works obviously very well with Ricky's ultimate, and the intelligence was increased as well. Now, the only thing that was nerfed is it's it's worse on melee illusions, uh, which I, I guess is a bit of a bummer, but even with the uh, change to the mana burn per damage, it's not actually any worse, and therefore even the Manta buffs are good for Ricky as well, right? Melee Illusion Mantis, instead of taking 350% incoming damage, they only take 300%. And so that's even a buff for Ricky as well. And so yeah, I, I think the hero's in a great spot. Treads, Wand, Wraith Ban, um, maybe Orb of Corrosion, like Treads, Wand, Orb of Corrosion, Diffusal. Some people, uh, a lot of people actually are just going Treads, Wand, Diffusal, like just straight up. And um, yeah, you hit a really good Diffusal timing and you rip through people in the early game. Next up, and this one, okay, this one's a little bit tough, but I think there is an incredible amount of potential here, and that is Grimstroke. So, you guys know, I've been harping on Grimstroke. He was on the top support tier list uh, just a minute ago. So, why is this hero a good mid laner? So, there's a couple things to note that make this hero a much better mid laner. The first thing I'd like to note is that his level 10 talents are ridiculous. The fact that, that this hero has a talent that is plus 50 Phantom's Embrace damage is nuts. Now, you might be saying, what about the Inkswell cooldown speed? Yeah, I think Inkswell cooldown is solid, but honestly, as crazy as this might sound, on mid Grimstroke, I don't even think you necessarily have to play around the Inkswell talent and the Inkswell shard. As good as they are, I think they're a little bit better on a support build because, you know, you don't necessarily want to focus on that as much as a core. You, you might want to focus more on uh, this, this just pure damage build. 50 Phantoms Embrace DPS. 50! You have to think about how crazy that is. Now, if someone cannot kill the bug, that Phantoms Embrace will do 90 damage per second. 90! On top of that, you can Veil them. I think Veil is super viable on this hero. Really easy to build up into as a mid laner. You give yourself an incredible amount of mana. You buy Crown, good build up, all right. And then you buy an E-Blade and it amps it even more. And on top of that, Phantom's Brace and damage was increased by itself, right? Completely outside of the talent. And Soulbind Latch Radius was increased as well. And of course, the Shard is still good. And you can even go down the Inkswell route still. It's extremely viable. A nine second cooldown Inkswell. Uh, you just need teammates to go in for you. Heroes like Earth Spirit, Clockwork, Tusk, 
yeah, I don't, I don't know, Dragonite, Tidehunter, anyone who's going to go in for you and just use the Inkswell is obviously a very good pair uh, with the Grimstroke. And I think there is, even though the, the biggest downside to this hero, 100%, is it struggles when it gets jumped. That's always kind of been the issue with uh, Grimstroke. It doesn't have an instant disable, right? It's not like a Lion or even a Winter Wyvern, right? It has something. Grimstroke kind of just dies a lot of the time. And so do buy defensive items. I think where a lot of people go wrong with this Grimstroke core is they're like, I'm just going to sit in the back and then all it on DPS. I'm going to go E-Blade and Veil and Kaya and Dagon and Ags. And then they get jumped by like one stun and they die. And it's like, hmm, okay. So don't be, you know, don't be too greedy. I definitely recommend keep in mind that early Ghost Scepter, that, that's the most viable, right? Because it turns into the E-Blade, which uh, works with your, your ultimate. Then I think Glimmer is fine. Four Staff if you need it. Any of these defensive items, even BKB. Don't be afraid to go these items. They're definitely very viable. And uh, yeah, you have to cover this hero's weakness. And last, but certainly not least, is Huskar. Now, I think a lot of people are still experimenting with this hero, but I definitely see a crazy amount of potential with mid Huskar. Its ability to snowball throughout the mid game is crazy. It really crushes certain matchups in the early game and on top of that it is one of the best flash farmers when it gets levels as long as huskar has a couple levels my man can take ancients huskar can literally kill ancients at like level five he's that good and so if your lane is bad or hard you just jungle if your lane is good you kick them out of the lane and then jungle it's really great and of course as i've said multiple times over multiple videos artlet was buffed halberd was buffed if you want to go that route satanic was massively buffed massively buffed that was a huge change for huskar it's a lower cooldown right lower cooldown and it dispels it dispels that is insane for a hero like huskar why because people are constantly you know casting these like slows and, and daggers and most importantly spirit vessel you just can't get rid of it by popping satanic and you know what counters satanic spirit vessel not right like that's, it's just so funny how busted Satanic feels in a lot of scenarios right now. But alright, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and uh, on top of that, let me know, as I said earlier, which role I should do next. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.